Hello and welcome to our reflection for the 23rd week of Ordinary Time. I thought this week we'd actually reflect on Wednesday's readings, which is September 8th. It is the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the birth of Jesus' mom. Let us start in prayer this morning. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Impart to your servants, we pray, O Lord, the gift of heavenly grace that the feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin may bring deeper peace to those to whom the birth of the Son was the dawning of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And the Gospel today is actually the shorter version. It's Matthew 1, 18-23. If we were to read the the complete gospel, it's actually the genealogy of Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his, Mary, when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, the church sets aside a day to celebrate a joyful occasion the Nativity of Mary, the birth of Mary, the mother of Christ. We celebrate this feast exactly nine months after the church celebrates Mary's Immaculate Conception on December 8th. And if we think about it, who better to teach us how to love and imitate Our Lady than her husband, Joseph? It's not difficult to imagine his confusion sadness, or simple inability to grasp what was happening as we read the gospel today. Joseph was a man who sought to please God and to live according to God's commands. And it was his sincere seeking of what God wanted him that moved him to decide to divorce Mary quietly, which I'm sure was a very hard decision, but the best Joseph could fathom. You know, we know little of Joseph's life as he has no words in any of the scriptures, but the few decisions and actions that we do know of helped change the world. We see Mary in the Gospels with a series of marvelous events. We get to know her and Joseph ever so slightly through the accounts of Jesus' birth. We see them at the presentation of Jesus in the temple. We see them fleeing to Egypt. And we will see Mary walking with Jesus in Jerusalem and at Cana. We know that she had a personal growth in relating to him. She was the first Christian. And finally, and especially, we know her intimately at the foot of her son the cross. Today we are invited to contemplate the infant Mary and the joy and anticipation that accompanied her entrance into our world through her humble parents. In a few months we will celebrate another nativity as we remember the birth of her son who is destined to become the savior of the world. Praying with Mary's birth today helps us to recall her place in God's plan and our place in that plan that goes along with it. It helps us to remember 
her yes to God. That becomes a very big yes in who we are today. I thought we would end today with the Canticle of Mary or her yes to God. It's also called the Magnificat. It's taken from Luke's Gospel. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and he has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. And let us pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, we fly to you for protection. Holy Mother of God, listen to our prayers and help us in our needs. Save us from every danger, glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. May you all have a gloriously blessed week.